The story is incredible. I mean, well, why don't we take it from a chronological order? Like being a Green Beret, you know, serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, I believe, as well. I mean, be, like the U.S. Army and Green Beret, Kara and I, obviously, we don't have a clue what that would endure. But how difficult was that? And how quickly did you get into it and realize this is going to be a, a serious grind to get through this? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it was something that – so so a lot of things in, in – in, in my life, I've kind of done late. I'm, I've basically been a late bloomer. I'm actually sitting here with my mom right now. She's driving me, uh, <laughs> driving me to my brother's house. And I was 15 days late, you know. So she had to, she had to hold, she had to, she had to hold me for an extra 15 days. Wow. Ever since then, <laughs> Setting the, the tone early. In the army where I had to be on time. I'm always a little late to the party. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't join the military till I was actually, it was actually my 24th birth after my 24th birthday when I went to basic training. Um, so I, I had a little bit of different. Uh, perspective and, uh, you know, some life experience. Not all of it was, you know, productive life experience, but I kind of done some different things. And and I just was, I, I, I was really clear on what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be in the special forces. And so I just kind of had that, that mindset of no matter what, I'm not going to quit. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I have what it takes, but I'm just going to keep going, you know, as hard as I can and, and, and see where things shake out. And it ended up being most of the most of the guys around me that made it, pretty much all of us, I guess, that was sort of the same mentality. It wasn't necessarily the most talented, you know, guys or, or, or most athletic or toughest. It was just the ones that just, I guess, maybe that does make you tough somewhat, but mm. the ones that just wouldn't, just wouldn't quit no matter what. And, and that kind of carried through into, into football and now into some other things. It's just that, you know, I think understanding that you, you don't have to be the most talented or the smartest or the biggest. Uh, you just got to, <laughs> you just, it's, you know, life's a war of attrition. You just got to hang in there and keep plugging away. If it's what you love, why do anything else? When you transitioned from Army life into football, how much of kind of that seeking out that camaraderie and that structure that a team offers um, was part of that transition in going from Army life into maybe why you chose football? Honestly, the way could ever imagine I, I i wasn't really thinking about when i was coming out of the military and going into football i wasn't really thinking about what it would be like to be a veteran and, and transition out of the camouflage and into you know a new jersey with a new identity and team and, and and as you said you know the structure and the locker room purpose all those things camaraderie i, I didn't think about any of that i just knew i wanted to try and play football now and, and this was like going to be my next goal and focus and then uh when football ended and all of a sudden, I didn't have either of those things. I didn't have, I really didn't feel like I had that locker room anymore. The, the reason to get up and go you know, train at 6 a.m. because you're, you're trying to be the most prepared to, for the battlefield or the ball field, that's when, that's when I kind of felt a little bit lost and just not quite sure how to translate that energy. And so my transition, uh, uh, you know, into the next phase of, of life, I guess, you know, I didn't really feel like I took much of one from the military to football, if that makes sense. Cause there is so, sim so many similarities, of course, you know, going to war and, and, and playing sports are not the same thing, but um, you know, that, that's why I, I was I'm fortunate enough to uh, be a part of uh, this organization called MVP, which stands for merging vets and players. And that's exactly what we do. We bring together vets and athletes and help them you know, find that next uh, purpose and, and mission so that they can continue to, uh, fuel the you know, the passion and the drive that we have, and, and figure out what what the next goal is, and you know, kind of transfer that all that energy. Because if we're if we're not able to do that, uh, it's really challenging for a lot of us when we've lived that that high tempo you know way of life for so many years. We're chatting with Nate Boyer. So um, my understanding is when again you left the military, you went to school, you joined the football team. You had not played any organized football before. And yet you walk on, you make an impact, and you end up taking snaps in the NFL. Like, at what point did it become somewhat of a reality that, that maybe you, you could get to the NFL level? Uh, you know, I, don't, I don't know if it – I don't know how much of a reality it really felt like. Uh, it was definitely – it felt like a dream uh, come true in a lot of ways just to get the shot. I mean, I didn't last that long mm -hmm. uh, at that level, but – you know, I mean, initially it was like smaller goals. Initially, like coming out of the military, the goal was just make it on the team in college. I got into the University of Texas and it was just go to tryouts, don't get cut. So 
So then I'm on the team. And then after a year or so, and I'm not playing, and, and I know I wasn't going to play at, at safety, the position I was, uh, you know, I was in because I just wasn't, I just didn't have, I didn't have what it, what, you know, the sort of intangibles. There just wasn't anything I could do to kind of get, to elevate above um, the scout team. And that was totally fine. So it's like, all right, what else can I do to find a way on the field? So I started long snapping. And that uh, was sort of a niche for me. It was a thankless job, but something that I could really focus and train at and become pretty uh, efficient at. And you didn't have to be the best athlete in the world. You just had to be very consistent. And so then that's what opened the door to the NFL because, uh, you know, I was 34 years old when I signed with the Seahawks. I was the oldest guy on the team as a rookie. And I wasn't very big, and I'm not that good <laughs> at football <laughs> generally. So, uh, but because of long snapping, uh, you know, it got me that shot. And, uh, and so when I got up there, you know, I was so focused initially on just don't get cut today, don't get cut today, uh, until I got to that preseason game. I only got to play in one preseason game, but I'm so grateful that I got to because once I was there in that moment, that was the – that's where I really kind of took a step back, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so crazy. Like, I'm – warming up on the field before the game next to Peyton Manning, who was playing on, he was on the Broncos at the time. It was his final season. Uh, and just kind of looking around and taking it in. And I, I got to play the whole second half and, you know, it was, it was amazing. It's something I'll never forget, but, but uh, yeah, I, 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 not until that day really did I sort of take that step back and, and, uh, and appreciate it. And, and thank, thank God I did because I got cut three days later. So <laughs> and I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I soaked that in. 